Hi guys, okay, today we are going to be luminating some nice big comfy adult size mittens. Um, when I say adult size, these, I've tested them on my hands and I have quite small hands, so they would probably fit a, from my size, which is quite diddy. Um, and I've also made my husband try them on, so they, they do fit quite a range of sizes. Um, this is the easiest way to make mittens that I've been able to find, so here we go. Okay, in order to do this, you will need your smallest out of the normal sets of four 24 peg standard round knitting loom. You will need a darning needle. You will need your loom knitting hook. Um, you'll need a pen and paper just to keep track of your rows or you can use a row counter. Some form of scissors or something to cut the yarn with and some yarn. Um, I am using a chunky um, sort of thickness yarn you can use two strands of DK or two strands of four ply you could go up to extra chunky without causing too many problems on this pattern as well okay in order to get started we are going to make a standard slip knot there we go you don't need a particularly long length on this one that is very short though. Let's take it up a little bit just so we've got a little bit of wiggle room. Da, da, da. There we go. We're just going to pop that over the keeper peg and our loom. Now the first 10 rows of this project are going to be done in a very standard rib stitch now i know i've done this one a lot with you before in the past but just in case there's any new viewers out there feel free to click the subscribe button for more patterns if you are um we're going to go through it step by step okay so to do a rib, rib stitch basically we're going to start off by just e-wrapping all of our pegs to get the loom cast on Okay, there we are, go. So we've got every single peg with the yarn wrapped around them. That's called an E wrap, which is where you just literally, I think it's because it looks like little E's wrapped around. But you just go from one to the other, wrapping it around. And now our rib stitch. Now, I always do this in sets of two because I think it's the easiest way to do it. So we do an E wrap around one and then we pull it down and across. And then we take the first one up and over. And the next one, we push the peg down through the stitch, catch the yarn, pull it up through to make a little loop, slide the original stitch off and pop that one over. Okay, I'm going to show you that again. So you go around the first one, pull the yarn down and over. And then this one, we take up and off and the next one we come down through catch the yarn pull it up to create a loop lift the original stitch off and put that new loop we've made on okay one more time we're gonna go around and down up and off down and through catch the yarn and replace the loop okay now all you're going to do is keep going that way all the way around the the loom until you get back to to the last one to the last peg and that will be one row and then you just keep going round and round until you've done a total of 10 rows okay so once you've done those 10 rows pause the video come back after you've done those 10 rows and we'll go from there Okay, so now we've done our 10 rows in rib stitch and you should be left with this. Um, once I was about three rows in, I liberated the um, the little slip knot from here. It's just to hold it in place, so it's fine to just slip that off um, once you've got a few rows on. Now, 
what we're going to do for the next 10 rows, I'm just going to push my work down to the bottom of the pegs. What we're going to do for the next 10 rows is we're going to do a straight A wrap um, all the way around. So really simple. So we're just literally going to A wrap all of the pegs like this. You can e wrap knit a few off, e wrap knit a few off, but I prefer to do the whole thing. Okay. Just lose with camera there. Okay, so once you've got them all e wrapped, it is just literally a case of going around and knitting them all off. And that's it, it's that simple. So you're going to do that for 10 rows. And so I'll let you go and do that. And then when you've got your 10 rows of plain a wrap, come back and meet me here again. Okay, we've now done our 10 rows of standard a wrap. So we've got a total of 20 rows worked on the loom, 10 rib and 10 standard a wrap. Now, that was very, very simple. The next part's still simple. You just have to pay attention a little bit more closely. We're going to start working the thumb on the mittens. So what we're going to do is for the next part, we're only using the first eight pegs on the loom. Now, you can, if you want, count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and put a little stitch marker on. But to be honest, it's fairly easy to keep track of without it. Okay, so... How we're going to do that is we're going to take stitch one and we're going to wrap one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And just keep we're, we're working yarn out of the way. And we're going to knit those stitches off. Three. seven eight brilliant and we're just going to mark that down as our first row and push them back down now whenever we're working in the flat you always use your last peg as kind of a turning stitch so you don't knit it you don't wrap it and knit it so this was number eight you can see we worked that one that one was number eight and count them if you get lost Four, five, six, seven, eight. So that was the last one. So we're just going to leave that one alone, even though we're working with this peg because it's a turning peg. And then we will wrap on seven stitches to take us back to number one. And then we're going to knit those off. mark that is our second row and then the same again we're going to keep going backwards and forwards like this so although we are using this peg it was the last one so it becomes a turning peg for this row and we wrap on seven which takes us to peg number eight and we knit those off. <gasps> I've made a mistake. Yes, I have made a mistake. Okay. Don't panic. I'm going to show you how to undo this. What I've done is I've only wrapped on six and not seven. So, we're going to undo them. And here's how we do it. If you're ever in this situation... You simply lift so you can see the little stitch, our last stitch hanging loose there. Yeah, see it? There, we just popped it off. We're going to gently pull that one back through. We're going to catch the little loop it came out of. And we're just going to pop it back on the peg. Okay. It's 
she says, trying to work around a camera. <laughs> it will go on. There we go. And we're just going to do that with the other two I messed up as well. Yeah, it was only two I messed another two I messed up. And you have to be careful and make sure you catch it before it disappears and you get a big run down the work. So you have to do you do have to do this fairly carefully. Although I'm probably making it look harder than it is because, like I say, I'm working around a camera. I do love it when these happy little accidents happen in videos. I meant to do this, honest. This was what you can do if you're worried about losing it. Is okay, come here. You can see where I've just pulled this one off. Is you can go into the one it's coming through and just keep a little hold of it before you pull it out. If I grab that there and then pull this out, haha, -ha, I have it safe. See? Then I can make sure I've got it. I meant to do this honestly. It was. To, to put a valid teaching point in the video. I didn't really just mess it up. <laughs> okay, so let's try that again, shall we? So, luckily we're keeping track, so we know we've done two rows. And let's go for number three. So, counting this time, we're using peg number one as a turning peg. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to take in all of our working pegs, which means we've got seven stitches on. And then knit it back. And that will give us our third row. Now, what I want you to do is to keep working backwards and forwards like this, using those eight pegs, until you've done 12 rows. Once you've done 12, hit pause and meet me back here. Okay, so we've now done our 12 rows just on those first eight pegs. And you will have something that looks like this. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is this is our thumb section. It may look a little short, but once it comes off the loom, it stretches out. It does look different. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this off the loom now. So to do that, we just want to leave a small tail. You don't need loads. Once around the loom, even a little, little smaller is plenty. So we've got a tail. It's probably about 10 inches long. And we're going to take our darning needle. And we're going to pop that in there. Okay. Now. Here's how we're going to take this off. Currently, the yarn is coming out of peg number one. So we're going to go to peg number two and run it down and through. And we're going to keep going around all of the pegs to peg three. Try not to get your yarn tangled up like I do. Peg four. Peg five. And you can see how this is going. Seven and eight. And then what we do at the end here, we might need to run our thread through a little bit more. We come back to peg number one and we go down and through peg number one. And we pull it off and it doesn't matter if the needle comes off at this point. So it looks like this. Then we're going to take those, just those eight stitches. We're going to take those off of the loom. Now we're going to get hold of the tail and set your loom down for this. 
and we're just going to carefully keeping the stitches nice and flat just pull this do it slow up it just if you do it with a little bit more care and a little bit more slowly it just pulls them in nice and neatly so you get that nice neat gathered look at the top and that is our thumb section and the best way I can illustrate this is if I carefully put my hand in and just hook the top of it yay you can see how it's going to take shape yeah this will close up at the end we will we will finish closing that up at the end but there we go okay so we're just going to leave that alone for now we're going to continue with the main part of the mitten now to do this because we've effectively took our yarn off we're just going to pop another slip knot in there close it down a little bit now i want to make sure i don't i'm going to use one of these pegs to hold it in place but i don't want to get it confused with the main knitting and we're going to use this peg so don't put it right next to it put it sort of two or three down yeah so i'm going to pop it on here so it's well out of the way there we go and it can just hang out there to secure the yarn now make sure i have don't run it up and through the middle like i just did that's a silly thing to do outside on we'll pop it about about there and then it's a good distance away there we go sensible way of doing it there we go now as i said we're going to use this one and we're going to start to a wrap and we're going to start with the empty one next to the first stitch. And we're going to A-wrap that one. And we're going to go all the way around. And when we get to the last one, we're going to go one peg further as well. So we're there. Now, on the first time round, you kind of have to ignore the pe pegs on each end because they don't have anything to knit onto. But we're going to just knit off the rest of them. These pegs are basically just a way of giving them a little bit more volume um, in the main part of the mitten because they will essentially, we're going to work in the flat again, so they will essentially be our turning pegs at each end. There you go, you see we've got the this spare one there. That was all on itself, we can't do anything with. That is our first row. And now we're just going to treat those two pegs like normal, like every other peg. However, what you have to remember is because we're working in the flat, same as last time, we're going to have turning pegs. So, purely because it's the first one on the row, that becomes a turning peg. We wrap every other peg. Well, not every other one. Every other one that has a stitch on it. You see now why we left a gap so you didn't get confused. And we're going to knit all of those off. And there we go, and that is our second row, and third row exactly the same. Just push our stitches down and a straight e wrap back using the first one as a turning peg. So that one's a turning peg, and wrapping back, and then just knitting them off the same. And you're going to continue to work in the flat like this and knit backwards and forwards for 18 rows. One eight, eighteen rows. So I'm going to let you go and continue with your rows until you reach eighteen. At which point, hit pause and meet me back here. Okay, we've now finished those eighteen rows, and it is time to take this off the loom and finish making it up. So 
we need some working yarn to do that with so i'm just going to wrap this round meh, roughly one and a half times should be plenty of yarn to work with pop that out of the way um and we need our darning needle again now exactly the same way as we worked the thumb is how we're going to do this bit just on a slightly bigger scale so that through. again our working yarn is through this one so we're going to go to the next one and go all the way around like that Trying not to get our yarn, <laughs> yarn caught. Not that it makes any big issues if you do. You just might run out of length before you get all the way around. Just be careful you don't miss any. That's the big one. So we'd hate for all your work to unravel at this stage. Nearly there. Back to that. And again, once we're through the last one, we're going to bring the yarn back across and go down and through the first one. Yeah. Now, try and leave the needle on at this point. You don't have to. It's not the end of the world. If it comes off, it just makes the next part a little easier. So, we now just take all of these off. Okay, so again at this point it's exactly like we did on the thumb. We just start to pull all of these in and again we're just going to try and keep these fairly nice and flat as we do it. You can just pull it in but you know what, it just makes the work look neater, a little bit easier if we take a little bit of time with it here we go with it now we're going to pull that in nice and tight be careful though i've known people to snap yarn at this stage and it it it, it just makes me cry it's heartbreaking <laughs> right now now we've got that all nice and done at the top we need to flip the whole thing inside out i'm just going to make sure my needle's secure because this is quite a loose twist yarn and um didn't want to lose it and have to rethread it at this stage. So, yeah, come through. Yeah. Okay, so now our project is inside out. Now, the making up on this is very simple. You can see the two edges that need to be stitched, and we have our yarn in all of the right places. I know this looks an odd shape, but trust me, when you get it on, start wearing it. And pull it into shape it's fine so we're going to start by sewing up down here now all you need to do is is look for the the loops that make up the edges and we're just going to go through and stitch those up 
this camera goes flying, it's because we are about to be invaded by a kitten. And when I say kitten, I don't mean the little kittens who I normally let get away with interrupting the knitting videos. I mean the six-year-old cat who should know better by now. Yes, you. Okay. So you can see what we're doing here. We've got the stitches at each edge. And we're just going through them. Almost there. I always hate making things up. I'll be honest, this is my least favourite part of any project. I always try and tailor patterns so they have the least possible stitching up at the end. I'm actually working on a pattern for you guys of a jumper that comes off one of the really big looms ready made up so there is no stitching it literally comes off the loom as a whole jumper i'm very excited to give it a try but it is quite a big project so i'm just going to take the little slip knot out there and stitch that yarn in with the rest of these but yeah i am working on a pad for jumper that comes off a loom completely done because that's how much I hate making up so. <laughs> sorry I'm trying to keep random bits out of the way this is a slightly awkward one to to show being done because the thumb gets in the way there a little and then we're down to that bit there I think that's the last bit would we say that's the end that's pretty much in the middle yeah okay so we'll take that off and now we come to this piece of yarn that came out the top of our thumb just make sure that's still pulled nice and tight there we did check the top of this was tight, didn't we? Yes, we have. That was a tiny hole. If you do get that, this one's quite small. I'm fine with that. But if you you are concerned you get a bit of a hole at the top, you can literally just get a piece of yarn and run it in like a little cross shape and, and put an extra little knot in there. It's, it's nothing that can't be very easily solved, put it that way. Okay, and then exactly the same way down the thumb. Obviously, this one's a little bit of a shorter run to have to do. And remember, we're just making sure we're just catching those very outside loops. You don't want to stitch really far in because then you start to lose sort of the stretch out of the yarn and lose the elasticity in it, which means... All of a sudden it, it doesn't fit because it's a effectively a smaller size than what you were planning on. I 
And again, just make sure you don't pull it too tight and gather it up where you don't want to. Now, as you can see, one more stitch and those will have, so sort of both our threads will be back at the same point, pretty much, are they? Almost. There's a bit of a gap there that we're going to want to close up. There we go. Would lose me thread at the last stitch, wouldn't I? Okay, so then we have all three of these coming out at the same point. To which we are literally going to grab two in one hand and one in the other and tie them in a knot. Two knots, just to make sure. <laughs> and then we're going to cut the loose ends off. And we're going to take, don't forget this bit down here, where we very first started. I'm going to pull the slip knot out. We're going to secure a knot just on the inside. I'll go for that one. One, two, three. Ah, would help if I wasn't using fussy yarn. I'm making a mess of it. <laughs> We've messed up the knot. Never mind, we'll stitch it in. It'll be fine, one will see. <laughs> Literally run that down. Just work the end of the yarn in. Oh. Will anyone see that? No, it's all on the inside. It's fine. I do like it when that happens. And then once we've worked that down, snip that. And now we can turn this the right way in. And we will have, she says, once the thumb comes out, he, a mitten. It looks a bit of an odd shape now until you've worn it a couple of times. But honestly, it's fine. It does kind of. There we go, find a shape, mitten, yay. Now all you need to do is go back to the video, start from the beginning again and make another one, like that. Now I know these look like two totally different yarns, okay? If you're going to do projects like this, look, makes sense there. If you're going to do projects like this, don't pick ones with a big variation if you want them to match. I don't mind looking odd and having odd hands. And yes, I know what you're saying. One of them is left and one of them is right. You just do that. And then as if by magic you have one for each hand. Yeah. Matching. Or not matching. Or kind of matching. Mittens. Yay. And that's it. Nice, easy, really warm. Nice. Re this is the easiest pattern I can find for these. Okay. Have fun. <laughs>